Hi, everyone. My name is Meredith, and I would like to welcome you to the Keep It Pro training call. Hi, everyone. My name is Meredith, and I would like to welcome you to the Keep It Pro training call brought to you by Networking Wisdom each and every Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific for the past seven years. This call is geared for the entrepreneur inside of you, the part of you that wants to grow and succeed. Here, you will not only learn business skills, but also life skills that will take you to the next level. I have the honor and privilege today to introduce the creator and host of this call, Mr. Amasio Fulcher. Some of you may have heard of him and of his many accolades in the world of network marketing, but for those of you who have never heard him speak, you are in for quite the experience. Ramasio is an extremely successful international entrepreneur, as well as a sought-after leader, trainer, coach, and mentor. Ramasio not only teaches others, but he applies what he teaches through his intense focus and dedication, which has allowed him to achieve unprecedented success. In the seven years I've known Ramasio, I've seen him build a team of over 750,000 people. I've seen him do over $2 billion in sales. I've seen him break records in network marketing and become one of the world's top MLM income earners. Although Ramasio loves the network marketing industry, over the last several years, Ramasio shifted gears and entered the commodities and finance world. This change was not by choice, but rather he was guided by God to take this new unchartered path. Using his strong faith and work ethic, he has excelled at this industry as well opening up doors of expansion that he would have never known existed if he had not followed God's instructions. Having said that, his true love is still to share his experiences and knowledge to help others achieve their goals. He is here today to do what he does best, lay out success principles and strategies in a way that is simple and easy to understand. His goal is to bless people with the knowledge he has accumulated through his own life experiences and to be an example for everyone of how consistent faith can bring great success. Over the last three years I've worked with him, I've seen miracles occur right in front of us because of his strong faith. He has been an incredible example for me throughout the years, and I'm honored to get to work with him day in and day out. Ramasi is here on this call today to serve you, to teach you, to enlighten you. I recommend that you grab a pen and paper and get ready for what he has in store for you today. Whether this call enlightens you or provides confirmation of what you already know, you're going to want to take notes. Without further ado, let me get out of the way and introduce your millionaire mentor, Marketplace Minister, Mr. Ramasio Fulcher. Are you there? I am here. Thank you so much, Meredith. I appreciate you immensely for stepping up and serving the big team. Guys, we are back again with another one just like the other one. I want to welcome everybody here. Once again, for the Sunday Keep It Pro training call, we've been doing this call for over seven and a half years. Come one, come all, right? This call is a global platform that we've been, we've been at it for seven and a half years. What we do is we pretty much pour into every man, woman, boy, girl, entrepreneur. It really doesn't matter. We got Catholics. We got Christians. We've got Buddhists, we've got Muslims, we've got, believe it or not, we even got some heathens on this call. That's right. This is truly come one, come all. The purpose of this call is we pretty much focus on two, two areas. Number one, we teach you the specific skills that you'll need to get yourself to the top of any particular business that you're promoting. The second thing that we will concentrate on is we teach you life skills as well. You're going to find that both life skills and specific skills go hand in hand. As always, these calls are always recorded. They're instantly uploaded to our YouTube channel. You can find that on Ramasio Fulcher at YouTube. Once again, Ramasio Fulcher on YouTube. And you can listen to years and years and years and years of profound wisdom. Don't ever underestimate the power of a spoken word. Let us not forget that in the beginning, in the beginning, in the beginning, God, the, the word was God, and God was the word. So let's not forget the power of just a simple word, a word. Listen, I'm not, the, uh, I'm not the almanac. I'm not the almighty here on this call. I'm just the facilitator. And I'm, I, I learn just as much 
as, as, as those of you that have, that have trailed with us here throughout the seven and a half years. Listen, so if you're here for the very first time, we welcome you with open arms. In return, we ask one thing and only one thing of you, and that is we ask you to subscribe to the philosophy that we do this call under. We firmly believe, we firmly, firm, did I say the word firmly? We firmly believe that what we make happen for others, God will make it happen for us. You know, in uh, Proverbs 11.25, it talks about be generous to others. Once again, what we make happen for others, God will make it happen for us. So, again, if I can get you learning one thing, just one thing from your time on these calls, I want you to get in the spirit of servitude. As the little boy once upon a time said, you've got to serve somebody. Everybody's got to serve, serve, serve. Serve your way to the top. Serve your way into the relationship you want. Serve your way to the promotion that you want. Serve your way. Come on, man. Serve your way into the miracle that's happening right now for you. Speaking of miracles, let us not forget this is uh, the year 2020, 2023. This is the year of right now. We are in the fourth quarter. We are marching down to the new years. And I'm telling you, the God that I serve, he said it, and that settles it. So whatever the miracle is that you are expecting, whatever the miracle is that you've been preparing for, whatever the miracle, whatever the miracle is, I'm letting you know that this is the season of right now. Now, look, I'm not a pastor. I'm not in a pulpit. I'm standing here on a conference call giving you a spoken word. You have two choices. You can take this word as confirmation or you can take this word as a revelation. It's up to you. I'm letting you know what I heard. And I'm going to continue to say what I heard until I see what I said. Say it again. I'm going to continue to say what I heard until I see exactly what I said. I know that this is the year of right now. The God that we serve is generous. He loves us. He doesn't give us gifts with any sort of remorse. Scripture tells us that. So God is not a guilty God where, oh, my God, I shouldn't have gave them that. I shouldn't have gave her that. That's not the God we serve. That's not the God we serve. Okay? Now, he does, he does like to prepare us for a good gift, and rightfully so. As a good father, he likes to prepare us, get us prepared, get us prepared, get us prepared. And sometimes, come on, Daddy, come on, Daddy, come on, Daddy. Come on, drop it down. Send it, send it, send it, send it. And God, literally, he cares about the character, so he wants to get us prepared. And so, listen, I thank you, Lord, in advance for all the wonderful miracles that you are doing, those that we can see and those that we dream about. For we know that your timing is spectacular. It's spectacular. It's never late. But, Lord, on this call, in this season, I ask one prayer. Give us all a great revelation. Help us understand. Show us the vantage point. Show us the perspective that we're missing. Show us the perspective that we're missing. Show us, Lord. You know, you know, you know the hairs on our heads. When we, before we were ever formed in our mother's womb, you knew us. You knew all, everything about us. You're the God that was in the beginning. You're the God that's there now, and you're the God that can see the future. So you and only you can see it from the rooter to the tutor, from the beginning to the end. So, Lord, we, we know that everything is going to be all right. I know it may not feel like that emotionally for some of us, but, Lord, do what only you can do. Give us a revelation that makes it unequivocal. You the one. You the one. It's nothing but your grace, your grace that allows us to be able to bathe in your blessings. Lord, listen, I, I, I know that we are, I know what you said. Here we are today. We ask for your forgiveness for whatever shortcomings that we still stumble upon. Lord, you told us that if we just keep our hand on the wheel, if we just keep our hand on the potter's wheel, you would continue to do your thing in our lives. I thank you in advance, Lord, for your work. I consider it done, and I expect it to show up, like, as you say, right on time. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to dive in here. We're diving in. And uh, if you don't know by now, the theme of this call is, it's got to happen now. It's got to happen now. It's got to happen now. We started last week. We talked about habits. We're going to continue that this week. We talked about habits. Today is not going to be a fancy call. Today is not going to be a a hoopla call. Today is not going to be a get them excited call. 
But today is going to be what they call, what the old folks call, would you just please give me that meat and potatoes, please? Just give me the meat and potatoes, boy. This is, this is the meat and potatoes call, okay? Listen, stop trying to be God. God is going to do what God does. I hate when people try and be too overly prophetic. Stop saying that God said everything when you're not quite sure if he said anything. I don't like when people do that. Let's focus in, ladies and gentlemen. God does not need any help from you or I on being God. He don't need help. He know what he's doing. But what I want to concentrate, somebody say concentrate. What I want us to concentrate on right now in, re- in relation to our miracle is what can we do? What is it that we can take control of? You know, where I'm from, we love to say control what is controllable. There's, there's many factors you cannot control. We don't need to get into that right now, but let's take inventory over what can we control. And let's get serious about that. What am I saying? In layman's terms, Your habits determine who you are. Those of you that are listening closely, some of you listening, you have great habits. Kudos for you. Recite it. Great choice. Awesome. That's good news. Consider this call as me patting you on the back. Keep going. You're going the right direction. Okay? But but I would would encourage you, you know, if you're so good at being disciplined and, and having great habits, share it with a few of us. Share it with a few of us. Share it with a few of us. Encourage us. What, what's one thing that we can do to get us on the right path to establishing good habits? Today is not a browbeating call where I'm going to beat you up and tell you how horrible your habits are and, and the reason why your life is not the way it wants to be is because your habits, your habits suck. No, this is not that type of call. It's not. But I just want to give all of us, I, I want to frame the call with the importance of you coming to grips with such a basic, um, a basic concept, and that is you are your habits. You are your habits, okay? I am my habits. You show, you show me a man's habits, and I'll show you where he'll end up. You show me a woman's habits, and I'll show you exactly where she ends up. Come on, baby. It's game time. It's game time. Fourth quarter. And all all I'm saying, let God be God, okay? Let him do what he know how to do. But let's, let's focus on you controlling what you can control. You know, uh, in my business with, 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 with my assistant and, and partner who I work with on a daily day basis, we talk about let's control what we can control. Like I can't control, you know, if the customer is going to say yes or no to what it is that we're selling. I have no control over that. What I can control, I can control my attitude. I can, tr- I can control the amount of phone calls that I make to let the world know what it is that I'm promoting. I, you know, I learn to control. I can control my productivity. I control me having a game plan before I wake up each day and having a plan of attack, right, strategizing. These are things that I can control. You get, are you catching my drift, guys? What can you control? I want you to control what you can control. And because, you know, this call is definitely, you know, there's always a spiritual slant on this call, always. I, I want to tell you what God says, what God says, what God says about all of our problems. You see, what I love about God and his wisdom, he, he knew since the beginning of time that we all would have issues. He knew that we would all have problems and challenges. So God is not surprised. He's not, oh, my God, my, one of my kids is struggling. One of my kids is emotionally distraught. One of my kids is you know, having a tough go. None of that surprises God. None of that. And it's almost like God is so awesome because he always beats us to the punch. He, he always does it before we ever needed it. I mean, you're talking about wise. You're talking about wise counsel. You're talking about somebody that knows you better than you know yourself. I mean, a man, he, he, he put together a Bible. He put together a manual and said, hey, listen, do this, 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 and this because I know you're going to need it. 
So I want to talk to you today, real quick, real simple, real easy call, on what God says about what we are to do. We're talking about we're talking about taking control of what's controllable. Okay. I like to keep things very simple. I like to keep things very, very, very simple. And what I want to do, guys, is I want to point all of you to just one scripture, one scripture, okay? And that one scripture is in the book of Ephesians. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe it's Ephesians 6.13. Let me double check it here because I want to make sure that we don't make any mistakes. If you could do me a favor, if you have a Bible close by you, maybe on your phone perhaps, if you could go to uh, Ephesians, uh, the sixth chapter, sound like we're in church, <laughs> and the 13th verse, okay? That's where we we, we want to we go to Ephesians, the sixth chapter, uh-huh, <laughs> and the 13th, oh, do I get that right? Yes, yeah, six, six and six, 13, I believe that's what it is. Let me see here. Okay. Let me make sure here. Hold on one second. I'm just going to pull it up here for us. Because I want to make sure I'm giving you the right specific. There we go. Six, six chapter, 13th verse. Nope, that's not it. That's not the right. That's, I know it's in the book of Ephesians. I got my um I got my uh hang on a second, I'm gonna grab it here. I know it's in the book of Ephesians though. And basically I wanna give you the exact coordinates of it. I don't wanna I don't wanna I don't wanna be mistaken here. But basically what it is, guys, is is where God tells us to seek ye first the kingdom. It's what he tells us. He tell he gives us he tells us what we should do. And the reason why this is important for me to point this out to everyone, give me just a second here, I'm going to grab it for you guys, is because he knows that many of us are confused or don't know what to do and you're waiting on this and you're waiting on that and, you know, you're trying to decide about various different matters in your life. Here it is right here. All right, here it is right here. Okay. Oh, it's Matthew 6, 33. Once again, guys, the book of Matthew, book of Matthew's sixth chapter, 33rd verse. Matthew 6, 33. And it tells you here, I'm just going to read it to you real quickly. It says, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given unto you as well. I just want to, I know it's very simple, but it's extremely profound, guys. I just want to point out what this is saying to us. It's telling us to seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first, seek first, seek first. Here we are, we're talking about establishing good habits. What we're discussing today is we're realizing that our habits are basically our lives. So what if you have a bunch of bad habits or habits that you really want to change but you don't know which one to start first, or you don't know how to make a change and stick to it. You know, I mean, this is real life. We are real people. We all have real challenges. So what are we to do? And what I want to give you is a word of confirmation, not from me, from the Bible, Matthew six thirty three. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well, Okay. So what are these things that we're talking about? Every other thing that you're wanting to know. What should you do about this? When should I do this? When am I going to get my promotion? When is this going to happen? All these things will be given to you. See, we must remember what you and I have to remember. What God cares about most is character. That is what he cares about the absolute most. And if everything in your life all you have to do is snap your fingers and it shows up, then literally it's not, give, it's not teaching you, it's not, it's not giving you the character of Christ. There are some things you're going to have to 
labor for, sweat for, cry for, fight for, be patient for. There are some things that literally waiting can do, the, you know, it, 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 waiting can do, there's some things that, that the only way that they can actually be resolved is by you waiting. And in the season of waiting, you're preparing yourself to receive what it is you're waiting for. Okay, so what I'm saying to you, what I've learned, the little that I could share with you from the God that I know and serve, he cares so much about our character, so much so that he makes it crystal clear in Matthew 6.33, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all the other things will be given to you as well. So if you are listening to me now, and we're talking about how to establish great habits, here we are, you're, you're expecting a miracle in your life, and you're doing all that you know to do, and here it is, I'm on the call talking to all of us, including myself, and I'm saying, let's take, let us take a look at our habits. Are the habits that we have right now in alignment with the expectation of what we're expecting? In other words, if you are expecting a boatload of money to, to open up and an opportunity to come your way, my question to you would be, okay, well, since we're talking about character, are you prepared to receive the money? Have you outlined how you receiving this new money is going to be different than what you did with the old money? Let me ask you a better question. Have you finally discovered on what to do with one dollar? Have you reconciled how to properly spend a dollar? Well, if you haven't, then we can't say that your character has evolved upon how, if you don't know how to spend a dollar correctly, then how could you spend $100 correctly? How could you spend $1,000? Lord forbid, how could you spend a million, 10 million, 20 million, 100 million, whatever it is that you're a billion? So when we talk about character, okay, and we talk about, you know, being prepared, and we talk about habits, what we're saying is, or, or have you put some time into what you will do differently? Let me give you an example. Have you spoken to your tax planner about this new money you're expecting? Have you spoken to your attorney about this new money you're expecting? You say, attorney, tax planner, what does that have to do? Well, have you gotten yourself, have you counseled with wise counsel, tax planners, attorneys, about how you can shelter your money, how you can protect your funds, how you can make sure you take care of your taxes, how you can basically steward this new wealth or this new promotion that's coming your way. You see, again, what I'm saying to you, are you prepared to receive? Those of you that have been praying and, 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 and waiting and, and, and preparing that, you know, God speaks to you about the man or the woman to be into your life or whatever, have you decided to make any improvements on you? Stop telling everybody your list of what you want your man to have, you know, in terms of what, what he needs to be equipped with. I need this, that. Stop telling everybody your list about what type of woman best serves you. Stop focusing on everyone else, and let's do an inside job. Let's start taking a look at what are some things about ourselves that we can reconcile. See, when you prepare, it means you make room. You make room. You make room. So, what I want to ask you to do is I just want you to take this one scripture, Matthew 6, and ask the Holy Spirit to give you a revelation about how to seek first God's kingdom. Now, let me make it simple for you. You guys have heard me say this before. I'm going to give you one sentence on how you seek the kingdom of God first. 
All you have to do, repeat after me. Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do today? Let me, excuse me, lead me and guide me to all truth. And if there's anything I'm not supposed to be doing, make it clear and give me the ability to obey. I'm going to say it one more time. Would you please write that down? You're going to need it. I'm telling you the one sentence on how you seek the kingdom of God first. It's not some old, you got to sit down there for three hours. No, it's not. It's not that complicated. Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do today? Lead me and guide me to all truth. If there is anything I'm not supposed to be doing, make it clear and give me the ability to obey. I'm going to read it one more time. This is how you seek the kingdom of God first. Imagine you wake up tomorrow, you take five minutes, you say, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do today? Lead me and guide me to all truth. If there is anything I'm not supposed to be doing, make it clear and give me the ability to obey. It's that simple. It's that simple. So what we're, suge- what we're saying is allow the Holy Spirit to help you with establishing good habits. Let the first habit that you establish, let the first habit that you, my friend, establish be one of which that's in alignment with what God's word has said. God's word has said to all of us as his children, we are to seek the kingdom first and his righteousness and all these things will be given to us. You see how simple he makes it? He makes it really simple. It's not complicated, you know. And all, all we're saying is, hey, listen, you wake up, hey, Holy Spirit, what you want me to do today? Lead me and guide me in the all truth. If there's anything I'm not supposed to be doing, would you make it clear and give me the ability to obey? If you make a mistake, get up tomorrow, do it again. If you make a mistake tomorrow, get, get, you know, get up the next day, do it again. Just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. And why are you doing this? Because here's the great news. You've got to understand whether you like what I'm saying or not, whether you agree with, whether you agree with what I'm saying or not, you, my friend, are your habits. Your habits are everything. You know, many of you heard me say over the years, your daily routine will take you straight to your dreams. And so I want all of us, myself included, to take a look at our habits and ask ourselves, "How, Holy Spirit, help me, 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 help me. How can I be better? How can I, how can I be better? Just do one thing. One thing. How about if, if, if the only one thing you did was just ask the Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do today? Lead me and guide me to all truth. And if there's anything I'm not supposed to be doing, make it clear and give me the ability to obey. Look, as the old folks said, yard by yard, it's hard. But inch by inch, it's a cinch. Break things down and keep them simple. Keep things so elementary, so basic, that even a two-year-old child can understand. Keep it simple. Take it one day at a time. Take it one day at a time. Learn to celebrate the small wins. String together a bunch of small wins, and that's how you create consistency. That's how you create confidence. That's how you create a habit. String together a bunch of small little wins. Start with just one day, seeking the kingdom and his righteousness, and then do it again the next day. And then do it again the next day, and the next day, and the next day. Listen, God made us a promise. He knew all of us were going to fall short of his glory. He knew that. But despite that he knew that we would all fall short, he loved us so much that he gave up his only begotten, pure, perfect son for you and I. It just goes to show you how much he loves us, right? 
So God knew that we were going to fall short. He's not surprised by this. But what he wants us to do is get back up. Get back up again. Get back up again. Let this call be a call today that encourages you to get back up, my friend. Get back up. Get back up. And God made us a promise. He told each and every single one of us. He said if we lacked wisdom, all we would have to do is ask. He told us the answers to our prayers, as long as it was according to his will, were yes and amen. That's what God said. And right now is a time where I'm saying to you, go before the king of kings. Go before the person that knows you better than your mom and your dad. Go before the throne of grace and mercy and say, hey, listen, Holy Spirit, what do I need to do today? Lead me and guide me into all truth. And if there's anything I'm not supposed to do, Make it clear and give me the ability to obey. Ladies and gentlemen, this is so important because I know that this is the year of right now. And I also know that you're going to have to push. There's going to be a sacrifice of some kind for the miracle that you expect. I know it. But there is a miracle that's got your name on it. There's a miracle that's got your name all over it. This is true. Do you believe it? Then if you do, follow these simple instructions and simply seek first the kingdom. You know the cool thing about this this call is you don't have to make any announcements to your husband, to your wife, to your friends, to your colleagues. You can simply take the advice that's being given to you on this call, and you can just start doing it. And you can see the gains in your own personal life from simply following the simple instructions. See, what I love about the the, the principles and the philosophies that we're teaching is they apply to all of us, all of us. They're biblically sound principles. They work. They're not – there's no – you know, they work only for white people, but they won't work for Latinos, There's no, it'll work for Russians, but it won't work for Filipinos. No. These principles that we're teaching, they work for all of us. And how cool is it that on a Sunday call, you get on a call expecting one thing, and next thing you know, God uses me to give you a confirmation of something totally different. Because this is the year of right now. But guys, we've got to focus in on our habits. Oh, yeah. We've got to take a look at our habits. We can't just do this name it and claim it stuff. It doesn't work that way. Did it ever occur to you, I'll leave you with this, when God created man and he blew into Adam, in other words, he breathed life into him, did it ever occur to you that God knew exactly how much air or life that he could breathe into Adam? In other words, he knew exactly the amount of air that Adam could withstand. He knew what he could handle. Do you understand that he, God could have blown so much into Adam that he could have killed him? But he knew exactly how much he could withstand. So in other words, always know this. God knows what you're prepared to handle. He knows. So if you find yourself in a very, very difficult situation, for some reason, the God that we know who's perfect in all thy ways, he knows you can handle it. I know you may not think you can, but he knows you can handle that. So ask God for his wisdom of what to do and how to do it. I know you found yourself in a predicament you never thought you would be in. Ask God, how do I navigate these choppy waters? What's my next move? Ask God to break it down. Seek first the kingdom. Get the instructions. Get tailor-made instructions for your situation. 
My question to you, ladies and gentlemen, will you just take five minutes, ten minutes, today, tomorrow, to seek first the kingdom and his righteousness as it relates to you establishing better, stronger habits that are in alignment with the miracle that you're expecting right now. You'll be quite surprised what will happen if you just take the time, just a little bit of time, and say, God, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do? Show me how to do it, please. Can you reveal yourself to me in a way that I, I won't have any questions, that I'll know that was you? Would you do that for me? And you'll see how kind, how generous, how loving, and how on time the God that we serve truly is. God truly, truly loves each and every single one of us. He loves us in a way that's beyond, you know, us being in love with our spouses. He loves us in a way that only, only a God, a living God, could actually do. And I want to encourage you to literally, God is not offended by you coming to him in a place of need. He's not offended. His word has... He is not mad nor upset that you only come to me when you need something. He's he's okay with starting the relationship between you and him where you finally came to him because you were in a desperate situation and you needed him to help you, to give you advice, to give you wise counsel on what your next move should be. He's okay. God's cool with that. He's totally cool with that. My job is to keep it so simple, so non-judgmental, to where any of us can do it. And today, I believe I've done that. We're talking about habits, and I said one thing I'm asking you to do. Seek, Matthew 6.33, seek first his kingdom, and all of his righteousness will be given to you as well. See, when we talk about character, God, what he's saying is, Let's get our priorities right. He knows that you're in a tough situation. He knows that you're looking for breakthrough. You're looking for healing. He knows that you're looking for, you're looking, you're looking, you're looking, you're looking, you're looking. He understands. But he said, hey, if you put your focus on me, I mean, focus on him, I'll take care of that stuff for you. I'll I'll guide you. I I, I know it seems like it's an emergency and, oh, my God, the bill collectors is calling you or this, that, and, you know, this is happening. What are you going to do this? What are you going to do there? Oh, my God, and when is it going to happen? Look, that's the world system. And God is saying, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. He's saying, hold on. Do you realize who I am? I created the world. I know everything about the world and all its trickery. And if if you just come to me, and, and, and reach out, ask. Ask me for wisdom. Son, daughter, I'll give you wisdom for free. I'll give you wise counsel. That's really cool, isn't it? It's really comforting. So what I want to do today is I want to let you leave the call, and I just want you to take five minutes. Holy Spirit, this is me. This is, this is your boy. Holy Spirit, this is me. This is your girl. And uh, I'm just coming to you today, and I, I just, I just want to know. I'm trying to seek, you know, the kingdom and your righteousness. I'm trying to seek you. I don't know what the rituals and all that stuff really is, and all that type of stuff. But I'm coming to you, pure in heart. You know I'm flawed, but I'm coming to you, and I'm saying, yo, what do you want me to do today? And will you lead me and guide me into? all truth, and if there's anything I'm not supposed to be doing, make it clear to me and give me the ability to obey. If you just do that with a pure heart, I promise you he'll respond. Now, always remember, God never yells. He always whispers. So you got to listen for the whisper. you got to listen for the whisper. Listen to me, guys. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. You've got to listen for the whisper. The whisper. The whisper. Whisper. Whisper, to whisper, listen for the whisper, and you'll do it. You know, sometimes we think we can live a busy life and get, get, and get ahead of God, like we can try it. You can never get ahead of God, ever. 
ever, 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 ever. He's already there. <laughs> where you're driving, where you're going, where you're heading to, he's already there. So you can't ever get ahead. The question is, what you can do, because of free will, you can drown out God's voice. Like, in other words, you can desensitize yourself to not hear. And I hope we choose not to do that. I really hope we choose not to do that. But likewise, you can just create a little space, create a little time, and just say, Lord, I, I want to hear. I want to hear. I want to hear. I want to hear. What do you want me to do today? What do you want me to do today? I'm telling you guys, this is the year of right now. Miracles are happening every single day in every way. And I know for a fact that there is a miracle that has your name on it. I also know for a fact that there is a process that each of us have to, we have to um, participate in in preparation for our miracle. It's not that you have to necessarily do, but there's a, you know, so depending upon what you're asking for, do you have a strong enough back to receive it? Are you ready for it? You know, so, so this is where the prep time comes in, and this is where we're getting our character together. This is where we're working out them kinks. And always remember, just because you may not be able to see God's hand, when you can't see his hand, you've got to trust his heart. We serve an awesome God. We serve Jehovah Jireh, which is a right now God. We serve a God that said he would be there in times of trouble. We serve a God of healing. We serve a God of breakthrough. We serve a God of second chances. We, this is the God we serve. So guys, take this call serious. This is not a game. I'm not here to browbeat you. I'm here out of love, and I'm telling you, tap in with him. Tap in with him and seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Hey, listen, guys, I'm the California kid. I think I made it pretty simple for all of us, myself included. It's work time. It's time to get off the phone, take five minutes, and seek his will. You don't know. You no longer have to ask how to seek the kingdom. I just I, I read it to you five, six times of exactly what to say. And just in case you forgot, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do today? Lead me and guide me to all truth. And if there's anything I'm not supposed to be doing, make it clear and give me the ability to obey. Listen for the whisper. I love you guys, and I'll see you guys all next week. Don't forget, this is the year of right now, baby. So I suggest you do it right now. All right, guys, thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Goodbye, everybody.